According to the final revision of the common rule, informed consent must be approved by an IRB. Informed consent must also typically be documented in a written consent form signed by the subject or the subject's legally authorized representative. Now, under the final revision of the common rule, prospective subjects must be provided the information, quote, a reasonable person would want to have in order to make a decision about whether to participate in the research study or not. In addition, to streamline documents that were getting excessively long, this final revision of the common rule requires informed consent documents now begin with a concise summary of key information organized to facilitate comprehension. The final revision requires the following nine specific pieces of information be provided to prospective research participants. First, the study involves research and an explanation of the study's purpose, duration, and the procedures used. Second, reasonably foreseeable risks to the subject must be revealed. Third, any benefits reasonably expected to the participant or others must be disclosed. Fourth, appropriate alternative courses of treatment or intervention must be specified. Fifth, the confidentiality of the records must be stated. Sixth, for greater than minimal risk research, whether compensation or treatment for any injury will be available to the participant. Seventh, who the participant should contact if a question about the research arises. Eighth, that the participation of the person is voluntary, that there's no penalty for refusing to participate in the research, and that the participant may withdraw from the research at any time. The ninth requirement for informed consent is new in the final revision of the common rule. It added the required element that research collecting identifiable private information or identifiable biospecimens include a statement that identifiers might be removed and materials might be used or shared for future research without additional consent, or a statement that the subject's information or biospecimens will not be used or distributed for future research even if the identifiers are removed. Now, there are also a number of additional elements that must be included in informed consent when appropriate to particular research studies. First, there may be some unforeseen risks in the research. Second, circumstances in which subjects may be withdrawn without their consent from the study because of dangers or other reasons. Third, subjects must be told about any costs they may incur. Fourth, they must be told about consequences of decisions to withdraw and procedures for an orderly termination of participation. And lastly, the approximate number of people that are expected to be enrolled in the research study. Now, the final revision of the common rule imposed further additional elements. There should be a statement that subjects' biospecimens may be used for profit and if any of the profits will be shared with the subjects a statement about whether clinically relevant research results will be shared with the research participants, and whether research with biospecimens will include whole genome sequencing. Next time, we're going to delve deeper into the ethical requirements for informed consent. Why do we require participants give informed consent to be in research?